Just one more thing about rates. Why does increasing the temperature increase the rate of a reaction? Um, that's true. That's not the only reason or the most important reason. What about the energy? Why is that important? Because then if there's more energy, then there's more polarity. That's true. There's something else that we should specify, though. Remember that in order, it doesn't, it's, it's not enough to collide. They have to collide with enough kinetic energy to get over this hump. They have to collide with enough kinetic energy to surpass the required activation energy. Um, so actually, the point you guys made was good. You would expect that a higher temperature would lead to more collisions. But also, something your instructor would want you to say is it leaves you to collide with more energy. Um, so if the alt molecules are colliding with more kinetic energy, they're more likely to have enough energy to get over this hump. So that explains what we start. We use this reaction graph to explain what we said about the start. Increasing the temperature increases the, re the rate constant because it makes it easier to get over the activation energy. So if you increase the temperature, does that decrease the activation energy? If you increase the temperature, does that decrease the activation energy? Nope, those are two completely different things. That's not how it increases the rate. It doesn't increase the rate by making the hump smaller. It increases the, it increases the rate by making it easier to get over the hump. That's a common type of trap on the test. Um, we could increase the rate by decreasing the activation energy, but how could increasing the temperature do that? The increase in the temperature just makes the molecules collide together more quickly. It doesn't make it easier for the reaction to happen. So if you increase the temperature, the activation energy is the same as before, but it's just easier to bump, get over this hump. You can kind of think of all these like little popcorn um, pellets that are bobbing around in a popcorn popper, and if they're bobbing around with more energy, they're more likely to get over the hump, more likely, and get over to here. But that doesn't make the hump smaller, it just makes it easier to get over that hump. So that's an important point. Also, what happens if we add a catalyst? How would this change? So what does the catalyst do to the rate? It increases the rate. But how does it increase the rate? By decreasing activation. Yeah, I just said that changing the temperature doesn't change the activation energy, but catalysts do change the activation energy. So a catalyst would make the graph go from here to here. So even at the same temperature, it'll be easier to get over the hump. So catalysts are very important. So this, if they ask you to draw the new reaction profile after a catalyst, it would look like this. So what's the effect of the catalyst on the activation energy? And what's the effect of that on the rate? Yeah, by decreasing, it increases um, It increases the rate. So what's the effect of the catalyst on the delta H? You can see that from this graph, right? Delta H is the distance from here to here, but I didn't change those two distances. I only changed the hump in the middle. After all, the catalyst doesn't change the starting materials or the product. So if you do energy of the final of the product minus energy of the starting materials, that can't change. The catalyst doesn't change the delta H. So what does the catalyst do to the equilibrium? Does it make the reaction equilibrium further forward or further reverse? Forward. You're shaking your head. Trick question. Didn't we say that the activation energy determines the rate, but the delta H determines the equilibrium? So the catalyst affects the rate by changing the activation energy. But since it doesn't affect the delta H, it doesn't affect the equilibrium. As you guys have started learning, the equilibrium is symbolized by the K. So there's not going to be any change here um, in the K in this case. This is very often tested. What does the catalyst change and what does the catalyst not change? So the catalyst, again, gets you to your destination faster, but it doesn't change the destination. The catalyst, again, is like taking a plane to New York rather than driving to New York. You still get to the same place. Why are these so important? So suppose you want to speed up a reaction. What are your tools for speeding up a reaction? You can add a catalyst. What else? You can increase the temperature. That's what you usually do in the lab, right? You pull over some heat to get the reaction to go faster. Or when you're cooking, you pull over some heat. So temperature or a catalyst, or of course concentrations, putting in more starting materials. All right. Um, 
Now, your body metabolism is all chemical reactions. So what does the body do when it wants a reaction to go faster? Well, it can't just increase the temperature because you're stuck at, what is it called, 98.6, right? So you're stuck at 98.6. So your body can't do what you do in the lab and pull over a Bunsen burner. That's why it has to use catalysts to make things go faster. And what are the name of those catalysts? Enzymes. Enzymes. So this is really crucial material. This is what all of biology and biochemistry is about, using the right enzyme catalysts to get the reactions to go faster. So one reason why the body has to use enzymes is it can't just raise its temperature. What the other reason it has to use enzymes, though, is suppose that you could just raise your temperature. The problem with that is that would make all the reactions go faster. But your body usually wants to make some reactions go faster and some go slower, depending on the particular circumstances you're in and what's happening in individual cells. Well, you can do that if there's a different enzyme for every different reaction. You can produce more of the enzymes for the reactions you want to go faster, and you can produce less of the enzymes for the reactions you want to go slower. So again, that's why enzymes are so crucial for controlling metabolism in the body. And of course, it's the DNA that has the instructions for making the proteins that the enzymes um, are made out of. So this is really crucial material for biochemistry um, and uh, for chemistry as well. And uh, catalysts are important as well in industry. How does the catalyst decrease the activation energy? By changing the mechanism. Remember last time we talked about how to figure out what the mechanism is for a reaction. Well, if you can change the mechanism, maybe you can get the reaction to go faster. Remember we said you could figure out the rate law from the mechanism. So if you want a better rate law, you need a better mechanism. So the catalyst allows you to have a better mechanism. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.